قائد لك بيت جاهز بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وأنفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the exalted, the Lord of the world. It is with a great pleasure that we have our brother Arif once again. And this time with this topic, the purpose of life. So without any delay, I will hand over the microphone to our brother Arif. Brother Arif, the microphone is yours. Barakallahu fika. وفيكم أخي أبو زكريا أه الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ويسكر الله سبحانه وتعالى that he gives his firmness of his of Allah gives his firmness of understanding of his religion likewise we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى that he makes us of the people of Tawheed Likewise, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us direction and purpose and that he doesn't leave us to ourselves. Likewise, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he empowers us with iman and an ability to get closer to him and that he makes us of the people who are rewarded in the dunya and the akhirah for knowing the purpose of life and living by it and establishing it until they meet him. Today is, as you can see on the screen, the topic at hand is the purpose, purpose of life. And in today's session, I mean, this is an extensive topic in and of itself. Books are written, extensive books are written from the ulama in the field of Aqeedah regarding this. It'd be extremely difficult for us to cover what the purpose of life is and the details behind it and the intricates in just a small, you know, moment on a Thursday afternoon. But what we will try and do is establish some very important principles so, so that we can then know and go in some way in understanding as to what these purposes are or what the, pur the purpose is, should I say, and how to recognize it. And how to know that we are following something which is correct and not something which is made up and how we can build on knowing that purpose and how we can eradicate other possible theories as to what the purpose is. So that is the aim of today's session, inshallah, to establish in ourselves what the purpose is and how that we can recognize it. Now, this is very important. Every single Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, in uh, Al-Qaeda, uh, Fil Mahabba is, a, is a, a treatise that he has written, uh, Rahimahullah. And again, like, like, I can, like I said a moment ago, and I can understand also is that this is such a detailed topic in Al-Qaeda that books have been written on it, treaties have been written on it, volumes have been written on this particular topic. You will perhaps not find a book from an Islamic scholar, What is the Purpose of Life? That is because the study of Aqeedah is the study of our purpose and our belief in the unseen and the establishment of certainty and the establishment of a return and the establishment of an, uh, an origin and where we came from and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us about into existence. So he said, that nothing exists except that there is an irada behind it except that there is a purpose or a wanting behind it. So now, if you were to stand up and leave the room and then come back, then I was to ask you, why did you do that? If you were to say, I have no idea. And this continues to happen in your life. There is no doubt that a person would say at the very least that this person is foolish. And I want nothing to do with this person. And there is no you know, intellectual discussion can be made with this person because of the fact that whenever you ask this person a question, 
there is no substance behind it. There is no purpose behind it. It's just, I don't know. Everything's, I don't know. And it could even be said that that person has lost his sanity because constantly they are doing something without a purpose. So how about our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the seven skies above us? We can only see one of them. A earth which is perfect, a sun which is perfect, a moon which is perfect, a sun which never delays, a moon which never hastens above its time, beyond its time that is supposed to come. Day overtaking the night, the night overtaking the day, provisions constantly be given to us, water, breath, your body functioning. There are so many favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given to us. There has to be a purpose. If we're going to say very simplistically that if a person wants to stand up, leave the room, come back, there was no benefit, there was no purpose, and we will say this person is crazy, this person is foolish, this person you know, is very simple in their, in, in their intellect, then how about some thing that has created all of this? How many times has Allah subhanahu wa so many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that from his signs that he has created for you something. From his signs that he has made subservient and easy for you to attain something. There has to be a purpose. But what we are trying to do now, right now, is establish who has given us that purpose and what that purpose is now this is also another important question if you are seeking the purpose for something where do we get that purpose from you get the question if me myself now arif was to make a table who is the person that is going to tell you what that table is and what that table is for and how to use that table? Is it for me to tell you, the person who originated it and created it? Or is it for other people to try and guess what that purpose is? What do you think? You can use the chat, you can use your mic. How do we determine the purpose for something? The one who has made it. They are the only ones that can tell you what the purpose is. Everything else is a theory. Everything else doesn't really matter. It's a theory. It doesn't really matter. Because it all is just guesswork. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they follow only guesswork. And what their desires make fair seeming for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says that these theories and these, you know, this guesswork is it doesn't have any reality to it because it is not the haq. And it cannot benefit the haq, and it cannot deduce and take away from the haq. Therefore, the one who has made that thing come about or the one who is commanding that thing or the one that who is prohibiting that thing or the one that is legislating he is the one that can tell you what the purpose is for otherwise everything else is just a guess so now here's the very first question that we are going to ask well one of the first questions but the first question in the document here 
Can a purpose be recognized by just a theory? Now, the answer, I think, is quite, this is rhetorical, the answer is quite obvious, but why not? Can a purpose, now, a pur because this is the issue now here that we have between Muslim and non-Muslim. I'm not talking about Muslim and atheist. I'm not talking about Muslim and agnostic. I'm talking about Muslim and non-Muslim. This is how, you know, divisive it is. Because the fact that what we're saying is either you have Iman or don't have Iman, that's what we believe. And it doesn't matter what other aqidah you have, it's not Iman, is it? So what we're asking here now, what is the purpose of life with Iman? And how do we know that that purpose of life is recognized and correct as opposed to anything else which is not Iman in what they're saying is the purpose? Do you get the question I'm asking or is it too loaded as a question? Hopefully it's clear, inshallah. The question I'm asking, let me just say it again anyway. How can we recognize the purpose of life based on Iman? And how can we know that the purpose of life, which is not based on Iman, is not correct? Now, the answer to this is very important. For the Muslim, the purpose of life is based on submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, he's a Muslim. Islam means it's Islam, to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us, we say, Ya Rabbi, why? Our Lord gives us an answer and we submit. Submit now or ta'ana. As for other aqidahs, which is not Iman, and this applies, like I've said, to agnostic, to atheist, but even the people of the book, as you will see, if you study, you know, their approach towards aqidah, etc. Their response to this is how but for us it is why you see the difference if you were to say how all theories all possibilities are open now this is again another important point that you need to make a note of there is no scientist, no matter how ardent he is as an atheist, there is no scientist that will say that God categorically does not exist. Anybody who says that is lying against their own religion, which is the religion of science. What scientists and atheistic scientists say is that what we are not sure of is how Allah created everything or how the creation came into creation or came into being. Therefore, anything is possible. Yes, God is a possibility, but even Martians and alien forces coming onto planet Earth, creating us and then leaving, that is also a possibility. It's also possible that we've already always existed. You know, so what they are saying here is how. This is the atheist who probably denies the existence of God until it can be proven to him with how. Other religions are very similar in this. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you will see when you're reading the Quran, when he gives a description of Bani Israel, when he gives a description of the Nasara, when he gives a description of the Mushrikun of Arabia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them some things. And their response will always be, as you will see in the Qur'an, how is Allah going to do that? So when Allah tells us in the uh, example of um, the two people that were discussing, the atheist and the Muslim, in Surah Al-Kahf, the Muslim was telling him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you from nutfa, thumma min mudla, thumma sawwaka rajula. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you in those stages, then he made you into a man. 
Why don't you worship him? The atheist, he responded, how is Allah going to respond? How is Allah going to resurrect me? Sorry. How is Allah going to res resurrect me? And even if he was to resurrect me, which I can't perceive is going to happen, he's already given me loads of things here. Then he'll give me good things there as well. How is very, very important for these people. In here, he had to know Namut or Nahia, or my Hilkuna in the Dahr. There was an Akira that, for, that existed in the time of Jahiliya, is that they denied the resurrection. They say life is life and death, and that's it. And when we die, we just fall into bones, and there is no resurrection. Time is the one that kills us, not God. And if God existed, how would we be resurrected? There is no resurrection. This is what they used to say. How, how is that possible? How many times you find the Quran, Fir'aun and others, they're saying, bring our parents, bring them back to life if you're saying there's going to be a resurrection. How is God going to do that? Not possible, sorry. The Mushrikun believed in this. The atheist today believes in this. How is also very important for the people of the book? To give you one example, Musa alayhi salam commands his people in Allah, Ya'mal Quran, Taddahu Bakara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to slaughter a cow. The Muslim, what does he say? What did they say? Musa, can you tell your Lord how we should do this? What color should it be? What age should it be? What kind of occupation should it have? You know, is it a grazing cow? Is it a transportation cow? Well, and surely, you know, at some stage we will find out how we are supposed to do it and then we will do it. How is very important for the people who do not have Iman. For the people of submission, the answer is why. When why is known, it creates Iman and submission to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very, very, very important because I'm sure every single one of us have had or had some kind of di discussion or, you know, some kind of engagement with people from other religions. This is the pivotal difference as to what the purpose of life is for the people of Iman and for the people of no Iman, irrespective of what religion. And we've just given you some examples. Now, for the Muslim, why this bit here why once why is known it creates iman this is important now because once we've got this then we can have iman and submission without this it's not going to create iman and submission how many times do you find a sinner sinning he's a muslim but you find a sinner sinning and you say to him Achi, make tawbah to allah leave this sin that you were doing he'll say yeah inshallah there's not much iman and submission in that person's life otherwise they would have stopped their bad deeds, they would have stopped their bad character, they would have stopped not fulfilling the obligations of Allah, etc. Why? Because the why is not known enough. You ask him, are you not Muslim? Yeah, I am a Muslim, but inshallah, I want to make what dua for me, brother. One day, inshallah, let me get married, let me settle down, and then I'll start praying my five daily prayers. Why, why, why do people say these things? They say these things because Iman is there and an element of submission is there, but the why is not fully known. Hence, the iman and the submission is weak. But if the why is known, the iman and submission becomes stronger. So what is the purpose of life? Why did Allah create us? Allah created us for this statement and this statement only. La ilaha illallah. That is the only reason why we exist. To recognize, to believe, to act upon internally and externally the belief in our deity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he is our Lord. There is none that deserves to be worshipped except him. 
and to him belongs lofty names and attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my Lord, who has made me into existence after non-existence. Therefore, there must be a reason why he did such. And that is the second, so that's the first part of Tawheed, which is his Lordship. He is the one who has brought me about from nothing. So therefore, it has to have a reason behind it. The second part of Tawheed, very important, because it's connected to the first one. Once you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who brought you into existence, then the second aspect of it is that he wants you to worship him. What is worship? I'm asking a question. What is worship? What is worship to you? Any ideas? What's worship? Is it to pray salah or is it to give zakah? Is it to fast in Ramadan? Any ideas? To give in zakat. So the definition of worship, so if you were to see a non-Muslim or if you want to teach a child, or you will say to them that the definition of worship is to give in zakat. And there is nothing else. I don't think that's the answer. I don't think that's what you meant. This is why we need to be very precise. Abu Zakaria, worship is everything loved by Allah. Barakallahu fiqh. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said, huwa ismun jami'un. It is a, a, a comprehensive term. Likulli amalin. Yuhibbullah wa yirdala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, legislated, and is pleased with. من الأعمال الظاهرة وباطنة ومن الأعمال الباطنة وظاهرة All of those things which are internal and external من أقوال والأفعال From statements and actions الظاهرة وباطنة Internal and external Things that we do privately, things that we do in public All of this is worship Hence what the sister is saying here Allah bless her Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us so that we know who our creator is and we submit to him in worship of him subhanahu wa ta'ala which is to worship him by following his religion. This then creates iman and this creates submission because now we know what the purpose is. But, and this is a very big but, no one, even inside Islam, even if he calls himself a Muslim, will know the purpose of his existence unless if his or her la ilaha illallah has two conditions that come with that testimony. And these are the two conditions that you can see on your screen. You must affirm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tawheed as your Lord, as your object of worship, and that he has names and attributes which are uncreated and unparalleled from the creation. They belong to him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we affirm this for him, subhanahu When we can do that affirmation for him, then we know that there is a purpose. And then at the same time, we must negate any kind of deity, lordship, object of worship, names and attributes that belong to other than him. Without affirmation and negation, a purpose of life can never really be understood.
because the person is then going to be scattered all over the place. Sometimes he's going to have Tawheed, sometimes he's not going to have Tawheed. Sometimes he's going to know who the Creator is, sometimes he's going to be subservient to the creation. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this before. I'm sure you've heard in your books, your studies of Aqeedah, in your readings, that your Tawheed needs to have affirmation and negation. But here, before we go on, we need to make this point firm of affirmation and negation. Therefore, we're going to look at the evidences. What is the evidence that your, la ila your Tawheed, your La ilaha illallah, your belief, is pivotal to the ability and the amount that you show towards affirmation and negation of it. Because quite often we might have some books that we study, but we don't really look at the evidences behind what is being said in those books. Not always. Especially if the, the purpose of the book that we are reading is to keep it concise, so then the author is not going to go through the evidences, etc. But the evidences are important because then you know where it is in the statement of Allah that it says that thing. And then when you know that, your Iman will increase. When you know that, by knowing that, your Iman will increase. By reading that, each word, if it's from the Qur'an, you will have a tenfold in reward. Where is the evidence for affirmation and negation? Is it something that we made up? Now again, this is important because there are people outside of Ahl sunnah that will say, all you need is affirmation. All you need is to know and recognize Allah, and then that's it. It doesn't really matter what you do after that. So you can... Fast or not fast, you can pray or not pray, you can wear hijab or not wear hijab, you can do good deeds, you don't have to do good deeds, it doesn't matter because Iman is in your heart, your Islam is in your heart, my faith is inside. So what they have done is they have just focused on affirmation and they have left the negation and then that has left for them not having a real purpose in life according to what we have said here, which is once we know the why it creates Iman and it creates submission. For them, as you can see, and this is a group within Islam, we're not trying to say that they are outside of Islam, but you can see that it's a deviant group where they are saying here that all you need to do is know and recognize the existence of Allah, and that's it, then you can lead whatever purpose you want. It doesn't matter, you know, you don't need to go into extremes in worshipping Allah all the time. Don't we find people saying things like that? That is because they only know affirmation, they don't know negation. And then you have some people who are just on negation. And no affirmation. So you will find some of them saying, well, I don't believe in idols and I don't believe in uh, God having partners and I don't believe in this and I don't believe in that. But, but we do know that Abraham worshipped God. We do know that Moses worshipped God. We do know that Jesus worshipped God. So, basing just on negation you can even find with that kind of an aqeerah some people leaning towards an idea that all different religions as long as they are some kind of monotheistic are okay why because they've negated idol worship therefore all monotheistic religions must be the same Hence, the, for the person's Tawheed to be established correctly and then knowing the purpose of life, there must be affirmation negation. There must be. There is no other way. Evidence. A lot, there are many evidences from the Quran. So I'm just going to use this one here. This is the very first command in the Quran, actually. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Baqarah, ayah number 21, as you can see here, 221. Ya nas, O mankind, Worship your Lord. Look at the word here, Lord. There is a reason why Lord is being mentioned. The one who created you. And those who came from before you, he created us all. Every single thing that we've just been mentioning for the last half an hour has been mentioned in just this one ayah. Mankind has a purpose. Ya yu nas. Seek that purpose by worshipping your Lord. Why does Allah say, Ubudu Rabbukum, and He doesn't say, Ubudu Allah? In other places in the Quran, Allah says, Ubudu Allah. Ma'alukum When the Anbiya came, 
every single one of them, they said, Abudu Allah. But here we have Abudu Rabbakum. A Rabb is the one who created you. Therefore, him creating you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, there must be a purpose. What is the purpose? The ayah ends with it by saying, so that you may attain taqwa. Taqwa is submission in following what is right and staying away from what is wrong. Ibn Abbas, an, he says, u'budu rabbakum, meaning, wahidu rabbakum. Make Allah or make Tawheed of your Lord. Make the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In commentary of this, Imam at tabari rahimahullah, the very first of the people who, you know, kind of, or one of the very first of those people who uh, had a collection of tafsir, as you can see here in brackets, he died very early on when it comes to uh, Islamic literature, rahimahullah. He said, What did Ibn Abbas, inshallah? What Ibn Abbas, what he intended by this, inshallah, uh, where he is saying here, Wahidu Rabbakum, make tawheed of your Lord, affirmation, negation. Meaning, wahiduhu, make tawheed of him. A, afradu atta'a wal ibadah di rabbikum duna sa'ili khalqih. Affirmation negation. Here you got the English. Single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acts of obedience to him. Atta'a wal ibadah and worship. Making him your Lord alone and nothing else from the creation. What does that mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is establishing for us negation and affirmation. When we do that, we will know what Tawheed is. When we do that, we will know what our purpose is. Now, I can see that we're not very interactive, probably because of fasting or... <laughs> but it doesn't matter, I can forgive you on that. And you can probably perhaps forgive me for asking you to be interactive because not all uh, lectures uh, uh, require people to be interactive. However, here is a task that we could have probably done and you could probably even do uh, in your family as revision and as learning also. What do we learn from this narration? Two things. Now, this is important. This is part of tatabbur, but it has to be done within the right channels because a lot of people, they make tatabbur and they make pondering on, or they do some kind of pondering on uh, ayat and hadith and they try and draw lessons for themselves, but sometimes you can get it wrong because of the fact that if you are trying to deduce an idea or a, a thought from a text or a hadith and that's not the purpose for what you are saying, is the lesson that you're trying to extract from there, then you could then be contradicting or contradicting, so I say, uh, the very purpose of that ayah or that hadith. Therefore, pondering and drawing lessons must be done in conformance with the actual meaning, which you can find in the books of Tasir, etc. So now, what do we learn from this narration? At least two things. Number one, and this is very important, very, very, very important, that the Muslim can only ever really have iman and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if his tawheed has affirmation and negation. If there is no affirmation with negation, if there is just only affirmation or if there is just only negation, then that person's tawheed will become mixed. Their purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become mixed with purpose towards other than him also. And then the purpose of life will become cloudy. And this is precisely, unfortunately, the, the, the state of the Muslim woman today, unfortunately, where you have some of them, knowing Allah, we, you know, we still class them as Muslim, Allah guide us all and keep us firm on Islam. But because of the fact that the affirmation negation is not strong enough and not clear enough, you will find them mixing their Islamic identity with other than an Islamic identity. That is because then 
the purpose has become mixed with something else. What's the reason for that? That is because their aqidah has become mixed with something else. What we also learn from this, from this ayah here, and from the explanation from Ibn Abbas, or the Anhuma, is that there is a difference between the creator and the creation. Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, you are mankind. A'budu rabbukum, worship your Lord. Hence, there is a difference between an nas and a rabb. Nas can never be the rabb. And the rabb is not inside of the nas. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord, and He is the one who created us, and everything else besides Him is created. Therefore, in order for, so what we can conclude with this now, in order for us to know our purpose, we have to negate all other possibilities and affirm one natural, logical, uh, you could even say scientific conclusion, which is that Allah is our creator and everything else is created. But if we don't have that aqidah, then this question comes about. Meaning, if a person doesn't have an aqidah where he believes that Allah is our Lord and there is a creator and there is a creation and everything that we've just talked about, affirmation, negation, then what other option do we have? What other option do we have? Now, what we mean by this question here is that all followers of faith, whatever religion it is, they will agree with this. The only thing that they will disagree with is the Tawheed part where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ru'budu rabbakum. and where he ends the ayah by saying La'allakum tattakun. what we are saying is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's our Lord he's the only one that created us and why would we want to dedicate our life as a purpose as an object of worship to other than him it doesn't make any sense because they didn't originate us they didn't create us they didn't bring us about and they are not the ones that are going to resurrect us and they are not the ones that are going to reckon us Whereas other religions will say, no, 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 no. This is where we differ with you Muslims. We believe in a deity, even the mushrik, even like Hindus and different Buddhists. They believe in one ultimate being. Except that what they say, just like other religions, just like Christians, etc. And it doesn't matter for us as Muslims. Either you have monotheism or you don't. But the Christian will make his shirk through one or maybe two or three, depending on what kind of Christianity they follow, uh, deities besides Allah. And other religions may have hundreds of thousands, or maybe even millions of deities. Besides. But for us, all of that is a lack of Iman and no Tawheed. Therefore, the purpose will then become clouded. Because now what happens is, is that they will now dedicate themselves to more than one deity. Even though they are saying, yes, we will worship one God, ultimately, but we need outlets, we need intermediaries, we need something which will intercede on our behalf to get closer towards Allah. So now they will perhaps say that they do believe even a Rabb, a Lord, but is Abudu Rabbakum, the Ibadah, the Uluhiyah. The affirmation and the negation which only belongs in Islam. So this question here now, what options do we have, is more of a theoretical question. Not a theological question in, in a sense, because all theologies, all aqidahs have already understood that there are no other options. God is our only creator. But when we're theorizing, there are only really two possibilities. Number one, we were not created. Or number two, we were created by something which is not created in itself. 
because if we were created by something else which was created then what created that and then what created that or what created that so then then it leads to a point where we say okay we were created by something which was not created in order for the sequence of creation to begin does that make sense so there are only really two options number one we were not created and all of this came about by chance or we were created by an external creator subhanahu wa ta'ala all theories boil down to these two possibilities and there isn't anything else really now before we continue this is important what i've just mentioned just now a second ago where you said uh, you know the sequence of creation has to begin with a creator at some point I mean, that is an argument that you find in Islam, but that is also an argument that you find outside of Islam. The ancient Greeks used it, uh, you know, other groups, deviant groups within Islam have used it, and they use it to uh, perhaps even promote an aqidah, which is not sound. So here we have a very important disclaimer, that when we're talking about different theories, and this is similar to what we just mentioned ago, a moment ago when we were talking about pondering etc that when we are talking about theories when we're talking about aqida when we're talking about you know deriving lessons and pondering and uh, and trying to uh, you know uh, get our head around different aspects of religion it all has to be then verified by the people of knowledge Allah says in surah al imran as for those people who have a deviation in their heart, what is that deviation? A deviation which takes them away from the correct path. It is in their heart. Allah explains how to recognize that. They will follow those things which are not clear. They will follow and dwell into ideas which are theoretical. Which are perhaps even sometimes nonsensical. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, there will be a group of people that will constantly uh, try and talk about religion without facts. Why? Because they have some kind of, you know, I don't know, they have some kind of deviation in their hearts. I was going to say disease, but let's just leave it a deviation with the word Zayyuga being deviation. They want to seek fitna by it. They want to seek, here fitna means confusion. They want to seek its hidden meanings. So this is important. The reason why this ayah is important is because the Messenger of Allah told his wife Aisha that if you see these people creating confusion, following and creating dialogue and discussion about ayat which have hidden meanings and the meaning might not be necessarily clear, فَحْذَرُ Then be careful. Who are? These are the ones. Allah is the one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one. He is talking about them in this ayah. فَحْذَرُ Then be beware of them be cautious of these kind of people this disclaimer is important that when you are having a discussion when you are studying aqeedah when you are looking at uh, different aspects of religion you have to make sure that whatever it is goes back to the quran the sunnah and the correct understanding from the way of the salaf Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. This is important. Look at what he's saying here now. فَكُلُّ مَا يُمْكِنْ الْمُنَاذَرَ بِهِ يُمْكِنْ النَّذَرَ فِيهِ The one, I'm just going to translate here and give you a rough idea as to what he's saying. He's saying the one who is able to talk about something is the one who has knowledge and a firm understanding of it. وَلَيْسَ كُلَّ مَا يُمْكِنْ النَّذَرْ فِي يُمْكِنْ مُنَاذَرَ كُلِّ أَهْدٍ بِهِ As for the person who doesn't have firm insight on that particular topic, 
that person is not the person that should be discussing that particular topic. So when it comes to aqeedah, when it comes to purpose of life, when it comes to theories, when it comes to your understanding of a hadith, when it comes to your understanding of an ayah, your understanding of a word, your position on a fiqhi matter, your uh, understanding of a classification of a particular hadith, all of that goes with this principle here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established for us. It must be cross-referenced with the way of the ulama. Because there will always be a group of people They have a deviation in their heart. And if you don't cross-reference your understanding, then it could then create a deviation and for you to then be misguided also may Allah protect us. So when we are talking about these two particular options, we have to look at it in the way of the way that the Quran and the Sunnah has discussed. So option number one, we were not created and we came about by chance. That is categorically impossible. Zero times zero equals zero. Zero plus zero equals zero. Zero take away zero equals zero. Nothing cannot bring about something. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay. Were they created from, from nothing? Am humul khaliqun. Or did you create yourselves? Both of these are impossible. So what we can learn from this ayah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created us. He created us for a purpose and this cannot be removed by a mere theory. What we also learn from this ayah were you created from something else affirms for us what a Lord is. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here, he is the one who created us. Therefore, the Lord, our Lord, is the one who creates. If he created us, there must be a purpose. Therefore, he must have given us a decree. Now, this is not um this is not um, an assumption because we can see the creation outside just look outside your window right now you can see creation and everything that is happening in the creation must be in line with the one who created it and what he decrees is the purpose of that creation now if i got a table for example right like we were saying before i've got a table and people start sleeping on that table rather than eating on it or using it for their work or something. People start sleeping on that table. What's going to happen to the table? Eventually, the decree will, or the decree that, the, or the reason why it was created for, will not come to pass. Therefore, the creation will then collapse. Therefore, what we can see outside is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has created the creation, and we know that His decree is still relevant. And all power goes back to him because this is his dominion. Is because we can see that the decree constantly is flowing in the most perfect manner. Am min Were you created from something else that is not Allah? Is not the one who created you. Or is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created you? And then he gave you, you know, senses and faculties and limitations and abilities. And the same for the rest of the creation that we look in the world around us. It must be Allah. Okay. If this is Allah... Then how else do we recognize him? We can recognize because of the fact that not only did he create and legislate, but he continues to provide 
and he continues to sustain. So now the option here is, were you created from something that can do this? Or were you created from something that cannot do this? Therefore, now this is going back to the purpose of our existence and submission to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, to deny lordship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as if a person is denying his existence. You know, if a person was to say, well, I cannot say that God exists, but I cannot say that he doesn't exist. We are saying your affirmation and negation is not sufficient for the people of Iman. So your negation of Allah doesn't act as an affirmation for him. Therefore, you are denying his existence. Even if you were to say, well, maybe one day I will believe in him. Right now, it is negation. Even if you were to say that there is a possibility that he exists, people will say, no, that is negation. However, through this ayah from Surah Tur, were they created from nothing or other than Allah or did they create themselves denying this is denying a fact because it is evident for us to understand now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created us otherwise where did we come from did we come from nothing or did we create ourselves hence the question for the person who doesn't want to understand this argument that we are saying here is how but for the believer we are saying why ya rabb allah you created us for you to worship submit now and we will worship you to the best of our ability until we meet you because the difference here now because this what everything i've just said here for us makes sense but for the atheist, for the science, you know, the person, the scientist or the doctor or the professor, they will, you know, have some kind of contention towards some of the things that we have said. I'm sure there will be endless amount of theories which can be used to go against the things that we have said. But again, at the end of the day, they're all theories. But for us, the people of Iman, it is not a question of how, but it is a question of why. Because everything else has been made obvious to us. I'm calling it in right? Were you created from other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or did you create yourself? Now, once that affirmation and negation has settled in the believer, how does that affect your purpose of life? Now, this is actually, you know, I know this is not a very good newspaper, so I've, I've actually cropped it out. No, it's there at the top. I don't condone this newspaper. Uh, but this is something that I found. But things like this you can find everywhere. If there is no affirmation and negation in your Akhidah, there is no real purpose in life. This is from a Muslim standpoint. From a non-Muslim standpoint, again, that would be something which is challenged. They might say, no, I still do think I have a purpose. I can be a humanist, I can be X, Y, and Z. But we will say, no, there is no real purpose. Because of the fact that there is no certainty. There is no real yaqeen. Today might be haq, tomorrow might be batal. Tomorrow might be batal, today might be haq. Affirmation and negation is constantly fluid. It is constantly changing. Therefore, your purpose is constantly changing. Therefore, there is no real purpose. And here's an example. It was just 60 years ago that what they used to do is they used to get people of color, as you can see here, black and asian i've taken the image out there's an image of people here and they were naked what they used to do they used to get people of color black and asian and they used to put them in the zoo alongside animals and they used to make them naked maybe even cover this as their private parts and chain them up and put them in cages so that people of non-color used to visit the zoo and they used to see people of color And they used to describe them as being primitive natives, meaning they're human beings, but they're primitive, meaning they are still very uh, backward in their development because of their skin color, because of their hair, because of, you know, 
the complexion of their skin because of certain different areas of texture and you know differences etc how would a person do something like this how would a person take the creation of Allah and reduce it and dehumanize it completely it can only come about if there is no real purpose or the affirmation and the negation is not strong enough but for the believer I believe we could never do anything like this why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here every single human being has been created by a Rabb that Rabb has given us plenty of signs for us to recognize him he is then therefore the one who created everything and decrees and legislates within his creation subhana and then after that legislation he continues to provide and then after that provision he continues to sustain so that we don't float out into space or that we don't perish therefore our affirmation and our negation of our aqeedah in him subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a purpose but for the people who have no affirmation and negation or have minimal affirmation and negation or have more negation than affirmation or have more affirmation and negation then their purpose of life like we can clearly see here becomes extremely cloudy now don't I want you to understand from what I'm saying here that everybody who has no affirmation and negation or iman the way that we look at it will have no purpose in life and then they will end up you know treating humans as animals I'm not saying that everything we can't generalize but how can something like this ever happen it can only ever happen because of the fact that Tawheed is missing and when Tawheed is missing purpose also is missing that's the point that we're gaining from here what's the second option and the real only option we were created by an external being, our creator, subhanahu uncreated. uncreated. Therefore, our creator, now remember what we talked about before, he is the one who created, so you can see the sun is about to go down. You can see, you know, the different things that are happening in the creation. The creator is the one who created it, and he is the one who is allowing for those things to happen. Otherwise, we know that he's allowing those things to happen because if he created but then doesn't decree, then the creation will perish. Just like my table, if it's used in the wrong manner, it'll, it'll get broken. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us because there is no other option. And we know that he is the one that is decreeing and maintaining his creation because of the fact that it sustains or remains sustained by the one who created it in the way that he wants it to be in his creation. That is understood from the previous option, but what we learn from option number two, which is never gonna be understood unless if you have Iman, which is that the one who creates and the one who decrees, he has two types of decree. The decree, which is the universal decree, Al-Qadr al which is that he created the creation and he wants the creation to be sustained in a particular manner otherwise it'll get it'll get broken it'll become destroyed but he created the creation this is the qadr allah as he created the creation but he gave us free will and he gave us legislation so that you can establish goodness for yourself hence this ayah here means that Allah, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ We have not created jinn and man except that we will give them free will and the ability to worship me. And this is the only reason why you exist. Ibn Abbas, he said, Allah created us That you worship me alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, willfully with free with free will or without free will what does that mean without free will what he means here no bas he's just affirmed for us the two types of qadr Taw'an, that is the qadr allah as shari'i me and you being a muslim we affirm for allah and we negate for other than allah we have iman and that gives us a purpose that puts us inside the qadr of Allah Sharia. We will do what He wants us to do, Subhanahu. 
But there are people who will not have that affirmation in negation. They will not have that iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them to exist within his creation with the universal decree. Ar-Rahman. Fas'al bihi khabira. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He allows them to exist despite the fact that they are disobeying him day and night. Ibn Abbas radiallahu is saying here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and that decree of legislation and that decree of uh, universal decree applies to every single one of us. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he says, Innama khuriktuhum li'amruhum bi'ibadati. I have created them only with the intention, only with the objective that after I have created them, I'm going to command them to worship me. لا لاحتياج إليهم not because I need them. وأن الله تعالى خلق العباد ليعبدوه وحده لا شريك له. Allah subhanahu wa taala has created the creation so that they worship Him alone without having any partners. فمن أطاعه الجزاه أتمن الجزاه Whoever obeys him and fulfills that purpose, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a reward, not just any reward, the most complete of rewards. Woman Asah, and whoever disobeys him, Allah will punish them with a stern punishment. Why? Because they didn't have that iman. Affirmation negation was not really ever an issue. Then there was no real purpose of life. There is no real reason why we exist except to establish the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person doesn't understand this, nothing will benefit that person because that person that person has not affirmed for Allah what is due for him subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have not negated what belongs to him in anything else there is no real purpose in that purpose in that person's life therefore any kind of goodness when they return back to Allah perhaps will never benefit that person we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us firm in our belief, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he completes for us our iman. Likewise, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these final few moments of our fast, in our final few moments of our month, that he makes us of those people who have an illumination of iman, internal and external. Likewise, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is al hayyun qayyum, that he makes us of those people that he is pleased with. And that he is happy with us at the point of us returning back to him. Likewise, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us through his mercy a place in his Jannah. O oh Allah, grant us for a place through your mercy in your Jannah. O oh Allah, grant us a place through your mercy in your Jannah for us and our loved ones. And likewise, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he frees us from the hellfire. O oh Allah, expiate from us from our sins and free us from the hellfire for us and our loved ones. O oh Allah, we ask you to make easy and benefit and bring about goodness, the state of the Muslim Ummah. O oh Allah, make us return back to our religion with the best of returning. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to have mercy on us and that you are al-afu, that you are the one that pardons, and that you love to pardon. So pardon us and our loved ones and all of our friends and our relatives and those people that are close to us and those people that have passed away. That Allahu A'lam. صلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين بارك الله فيك اخي وبارك الله فيكم جميعا we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you mainly in this world in the hereafter for such and we thank you so much for such beneficial topic وبارك الله فيك again inshallah now we just open the questions session anybody's got question can put it for you can put your question forward but make sure the question is within the topic. Make sure your question is within the topic. Barak Allah Fikum.
Uh, okay, so the question is asking here if we can explain if we are supposed to have affirmation and negation, and the answer is yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran uh, um, that there is no messenger that was sent to a group of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there is every single nation had a messenger sent to them and every single one of them came with affirmation and negation the sentence in itself la ilaha is a negation illallah is an affirmation Allah tells us in the Quran affirmation and negation cooperate in those things which are good do not cooperate with those things which are bad so what we can learn is that in your belief in your submission to Allah in your halal and in your haram you must be following those guidelines as to those things that are good and staying away from those things which are bad and all of that comes from affirming for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has affirmed for himself and negating for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has negated for himself and negating for others what can only belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ben. Yeah, thank you for a very, 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 very nice lecture. <laughs> long time. I've never had such a good lecture. Very long time. Because I remember when I was, when I was a kid, I was in secondary school. <clears throat> In, uh, and I was kicked off from the school because we got a Russian who came to the school to teach us. And the first thing he told us, there is no God because we cannot see God. We cannot uh, feel God. We cannot uh, touch God. So anything of which you cannot touch, you cannot feel, you can see, does not exist. And so I stood up, I say, I asked the class, can you see our, uh, our, our, our teacher's head? Yeah. Can you see his eyes? Yes. Can you see his brain? No. Then our teacher is crazy. Let us go out. And we went out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kicked out from the school because I was too naughty. <laughs> because, well, we cannot feel his head, we, we cannot feel his brain, so he's crazy. So. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that it's a fact, what we're talking here now, it's a complete fact, real fact, and nothing else. <laughs> Thank you very much. Barakallah, Zakallah care for you very uh, Thank you, I just remember when I was a kid, so uh, I had to, to leave the country because I was, I was sent to the president, uh, you know, it was a big case that I, I start chasing teachers out of the country. <laughs> Love bless you, brother. Love bless you. Thank, thank you very much for the lecture. <laughs> thank you for your kind words. Barakallah. There's another question here for you. Uh, yeah, we do have lectures, we do have uh, different events and, and different things. Um, this is uh, the institute that we have, the Thicker Institute, you can follow it on Twitter, you can follow it on uh, YouTube, um, uh, and you'll, you know, you'll get the different updates. We are currently uh, planning on beginning, uh, um, or we're kind of like enrolling students to um, start the next academic year which will start in june july and this will obviously have akida as a module in there and fit on other things as well so uh, yeah we do have different uh, activities and different um, programs that have, that have been put down i think uh, i think there are no more questions. So, Zakallah Khair, thank you for attending. And um, 
we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place me. She, she, she wants to know what the college name again. Uh, it's called Ahlul Dhikr. Yeah, it's on the screen here. Ahlul Dhikr Institute. Ma'am, go ahead. Go ahead, Akhi. Uh, Ahlul Dhikr, here it is. Yeah, Ahlul Dhikr. Okay. Barakallah fiki. Subhanakum wa bihamdik shunayin ala nistaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Um, Subhanak wa huma. Walhamdulillah, shalallahu ilaha 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 il